Okay, Dan Roberts here in the FOS studio in New York, and I've got Andrew Yaffe, the newly named CEO of Dude Perfect. Andrew, what's up? All right, good to see you. Thanks for having me. So just named CEO of Dude Perfect as we take this three weeks ago, That's, under a month ago? Yes, coming up on a month. Okay, brand new job. I was reading something that must have been in a press release or a statement is that you are tasked with turning Dude Perfect into a 21st century media company. So what, what does that mean? Yeah, you know, first of all, thank you for having me. Really excited to be here. Uh, excited to be a part of Dude Perfect. Um, what uh, the guys have built over the last 15 years is, is amazing. Um, they started in a backyard at Texas A&M, uh, five friends, and now have built a real uh, media business. Um, but what we want to do, you know, build on that going forward is think about all the different ways that we can bring Do Perfect to our audience. We have 60 million subscribers on YouTube, over 100 million across, uh, across all platforms. Uh, there is an amazing level of affinity. Uh, like you walk through an airport or a sporting event with these guys and mm. they are trailed by kids. Uh, and it's an amazing thing to see. Um, we want to ensure that we can deliver on all the different elements of that in a lot of new ways to our fans. That's new content formats, that's uh, new platforms, uh, and that's new products. That's everything from toys to our live experiences. Uh, we're going on tour next summer. We've done a number of tours uh, over the last several years. This will be our first world tour. Uh, so we'll be in 25 cities uh, in the U.S. and Europe. Hmm. Um, and we're just incredibly excited to, to bring Dude Perfect to our fans. Wow, a lot there. Uh, 100 million followers, these are good numbers. How do you expand on the brand? And I'll just give you my perspective. I mean, when I think of Dude Perfect, I think of trick shot videos. Is it fair to say? And obviously it's, it's evolved to the point where it's a lot more than that. But this is how you know, these five guys kind of made their name, is these crazy trick shot videos. Uh, now, as you try to, I imagine, also recruit new types of fans, yeah. are you hamstrung at all? I mean, it's literally called dude, right? You don't want it to just be dudes. Yeah. I'll, I'll take that in a couple different pieces. <laughs> First, uh, the guys, they started with some crazy trick shots, and I think that'll always be part of our DNA. But we've, over the last several years, well before I got there, have expanded into lots of new content categories and franchises. Um, a couple... Uh, one is Stereotypes, which is a, a scripted franchise we do around funny things that, uh, that happen in friends and family relationships. Highly recommend Dad Stereotypes is a good one. I know. Good for me. Yeah, good for, good for yeah. both of I'm us. I'm already walking Stereotypes. Uh, so yes, yeah. so uh, <laughs> you'll, you'll enjoy that. Um, second is Overtime, which is our variety yeah. show. So we're 48 episodes in to our Overtime franchise, um, and it is looks like something that could appear on network TV. It is 30 minutes long, it has four segments, uh, fans are, are big fans of individual segments, there's a desk, we have guests on, we have a new episode coming in a couple of weeks with a, uh, an A-list athlete co-hosting it with us. Um, there are lots of new formats that I think are well beyond trick shots for us, but I think what they all come back to is a few key kind of principles or values or elements, like one is family, uh, mm -hmm. Another is fun, uh, another is sports. Um, and those are things that I think throughout whatever we do is Dude Perfect, you'll continue to see those elements appear um, in new and different ways. What are the comps here when you look around the media landscape? I mean, I think of things like personality-driven media and that appears now in a number of buckets. I mean, there's the Kelsey Brothers and their podcast, there's Barstool Sports, which I think has built a multifaceted business that is bigger now than than any one personality, you know, in, in kind of an impressive way. Um, there are a number of these, you know, one-off shows. There's influencers and athletes who've tried to keep the momentum going from when they played sports. They got the cameras following them at all times. I mean, when you look around the, I guess, not just sports, but it's also humor and entertainment, yeah. that landscape, what are the places that you think are, are doing it right? Um, I think there are a lot of places, you know, I think, uh, one that I think is really interesting is The Ringer um, and mm -hmm. what they've done in terms of branching out from any individual format or any individual talent to lots of different elements and lots of different formats, be it audio or written or movie or YouTube. Um, they're a really interesting case study and I think uh, having a clear vision and ethos for your content and you know knowing that when someone comes to 
watch a piece of that or listen to a piece of that, they have a pretty good sense of what they're going to get. That's something that we really aspire to and I think needs to be true for, for Dude Perfect, that whether you're listening to audio content or watching a show on YouTube or experiencing us on another platform or going to our live event, there's a through line there that the content itself might look different, but you know exactly what you're going to get from us, and that's you know trusted, family-friendly entertainment. Hmm. Family-friendly, that's interesting. Uh, I can't believe we haven't brought this up yet, but you come from the NBA, an EVP at the NBA for a while, over yes. social and some other things. Um, how do you kind of bring that perspective to bear? And um, you know, is Dude Perfect going to be, or has it been kind of heavy and on the basketball side <laughs> of things? And I know I mentioned trick shots. I keep going back to this, yeah. but um, you know, how do you kind of take what you've learned at the NBA and bring it to running a very um, new era media company. Totally yeah. different kind of thing. Yeah, well I started the NBA for the first time in 2010, so I've been there quite a while. Uh, I started in our ticket sales uh, and analytics group. Uh, I then went to our strategy group and then for the last four or five years led our content team. Um, and so I, I view, I'm not just gonna take the content experience, I'm really gonna take that holistic experience to what we're gonna do it at Dude Perfect, um, whether that's driving our live events business or in, our strat in my strategy role, I got us into new business lines and launched new uh, activities and new brands for us as a league. Um, that's everything from our eSports league to the, um, a youth basketball competition that we launched to the Basketball Africa League that my team helped build. Um, those are all new things that we brought to market. Um, but ultimately, you know, Yes, I think the content experience is most directly relevant to Dude Perfect. Uh, we had 20 million followers or 20 million subscribers on YouTube at the NBA. I did not expect to go to you know a brand that tripled that yeah. uh, when I when I <laughs> left, uh, but I did. Uh, but you know, I think some of the things I learned that what worked for us at the NBA is entertaining content where audiences felt really connected to the characters or the the. Um, talent that was on their phones or on their TVs, and I think that's exactly what we do. And I think we have some advantages at a, a brand like ours where the talent who gen literally generations have grown up with now over the last 15 years mm -hmm. have a real connection to our individual people and the people behind Dude Perfect. Uh, and I can, um, we can continue to build on that relationship. We can expand that relationship to new talent uh, in a way that at the NBA, you know, you can't always have as much control over, over the talent to do so. Um, so I think there's, there's a lot of opportunity to take some of the learnings of, I mean, the NBA did, before my time has done an amazing job on social media, um, but a lot of those learnings I think are applicable for what, what we want to build. Yeah, even separate from just the dude perfect job, I'll push you on that a little bit with the NBA. It, it really at some point became kind of the social media league, and I think in some ways, a lot of people give credit to Adam Silver, maybe rightly or wrongly, but there, there was a point where the NBA became the kind of poster child version of the outspoken athletes. Maybe you could put 2020 in there, even before that, 2017 to 2020, but the, the shut up and dribble response and LeBron was a big part of that. But I think other leagues look to the NBA and in many ways like wish they could have that effect. Uh, and then, you know, the sports marketing experts always tell you that in the case of the NFL, it's because, well, they're under helmets, so you can't see them. But uh, I would just be curious, like, what was difficult at the NBA or anything that was hard? I mean, in some ways, I don't want to say the work does itself, but, the, you know, as, as the players became more outspoken and, and they really embraced over the last 10 years, especially, like, being personal brands. Yeah. But uh, what was, you know, when you look back on your time at the NBA, um, as the dust settles, you know, <laughs> what, what was either hard or interesting or surprising about your years there? What did you see change? You know, working in live sports is always hard. Uh, it's very unpredictable. The storylines are, are very difficult. And you're at the um, kind of behest of what happens on the court. Mm. And so sometimes the storylines are great and the players and the teams that our fans want to see advance, advance. Mm. And you get a sort of magical experience like the 2016 finals between Steph and LeBron and Kyrie hitting an, you know, one of the most iconic shots in NBA history. Uh, and then other times you don't get that. Sometimes and you get the 2024 NBA final. No comment. Uh, and I'm a Celtics fan, so <laughs> okay. I, I'm saying that, you know, it's fine for me, but you get other people saying, oh, boring. And, and those things are outside your control. Uh, I was very excited to come to a place where the 
you know, a lot of a lot more of those things are in our control, mm -hmm. and we um, both for our kind of unscripted as well as other content endeavors, like have a lot more. Uh, uh, we can control a lot more what we want our content to look like, when we want it to to um, pop, when we want to invest in certain areas, um, and that's a really exciting element of this. Um, so you know, I think that was definitely something I took away is no more. Uh, you know, late nights w waiting to see who's gonna who's gonna win the game. Uh, I'm ho hopefully that's slightly in the past for me. I asked you about the media landscape and other digital media companies that you think are doing a good job and are interesting. You said the Ringer. Uh, what about other leagues or sports right now? Obviously, huge momentum for the WNBA and yeah. um, women's sports in general having a big moment. A lot of new investment coming in there. But as you look around the sports landscape, our world, uh, and what's happening on the business side, what are you watching? Yeah. Um, I think uh, women's sports is a fascinating category and one that I'm paying very close attention to, uh, both in my former role and in my current role, uh, that I think there's a lot of opportunity for us to, to um, get in there. I think youth sports is another mm -hmm. category where, uh, you know, given our audience and our connection with kids and families, we think there's a big opportunity for Dude Perfect to play a bigger role in uh, youth sports. Um, we've seen a lot of uh, private equity and other dollars mm -hmm. flow into the space, um, but and I've spent a lot of time there over the last several years trying to understand opportunities in the in the youth sports space. Uh, but that's one where I think we're we're paying very close attention as well, and I think there's big opportunities for us if we uh, if we find the right way to to enter. I'm sure some high percentage of Dude Perfect fans, followers, viewers are young people. Yes, Wait. yes, I would say our. Uh, our core audience is families. Uh, we are, uh, you know, 70 plus percent under the age of uh, 34. Uh, so, and and really much younger, wow. much younger than that in many right. circumstances. Uh, so, you know, it, it is interesting because a lot of fans have grown up with us, uh, but new generations of kids have continued to have continued to enter. So, you know, I think that that real family audience is our sweet spot. Uh, let's end on this. As you look at the next five to ten years, and this is now specifically your job running yeah. one of these companies, uh, you know what trends do you see uh, accelerating, or what do you yeah. see changing the most? And of course, at FOS, we're thinking about and dealing with the same things. You know, trying to navigate being a digital-only media company. It's it's everything, right? It's live events, it's podcasts, it's yeah. video, like we're doing right now. It's breaking news and written articles. For you, it's much more mm -hmm. on the media side. But but what do you see happening in your crystal ball? You know, it's interesting. Uh, I and I'm not just saying this because I came from the NBA, in a lot of ways I view our business as not too dissimilar from a sports franchise. And mm. that if you look at all the revenue streams a league or a team has, it's ticket sales, it's merchandise, it's social content and licensed content, and it's sponsorship. And those are really all the same revenue streams I oversee right now. Uh, and so, and you have five players. You know, yeah, yeah, talent. exactly. And I have five starters in my talent, uh, and it's a talent business. Uh, you know, I think that's the that's how I kind of look at the world and approach our opportunity. Is how do I continue to build on all the things that I saw great NBA teams and other sports franchises do uh, in terms of great brand partnerships that are mutually beneficial for all involved. In terms of live experiences and live events that uh, are, you know, we've seen the experiential economy grow massively over the last several years. How do we take advantage of that trend and ensure that we can get all our fans to, to really experience and touch and feel our brand in person? Uh, and how do we keep developing new, highly engaging content um, uh, across platforms and in lots of different formats that, that people are consuming? So I don't see any indication that any of those are going to slow down mm -hmm. in the short term. Um, and so we're just excited to invest and double down in all those areas. Good content. Sounds yes. easy enough. Right? Yeah, just start with just good, content. good content. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. cool. Andrew, thanks. Thanks Th for joining us. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me.